All right, guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Beantown Banter and Bullshit. We've got a great one tonight. Um, introducing my friend, co-worker at one point, uh, offensive line coach for the Massachusetts Pirates, um, Rob Orell. Rob, thank you for coming in tonight. Thanks for uh, having me. I, I've been looking forward to this conversation. I can't even tell you how long, man. <laughs> Um, so first off, we're going to give a shout to our sponsors, uh, a couple big ones this week. Um, we got my buddy, uh, Joe Cupsis with Emily Interiors out in Shrewsbury. Um, Joe's background, another one, great friend, uh, played Little League with him, super successful. He's got a couple different, uh, remodel works as one of his companies, uh, family oriented dude, uh, loves the area, just phenomenal human being. He helped us out with the sponsorship. He's now one of our lead sponsors, so thank you, Joe. Uh, we have Platts Landscaping, who's been my man since day one. Um, and also today, I don't know if you know Chris Seeley. The entire city knows Chris Seeley, right? He, he's, you know, last year he was in the, the um, contest for biggest Bruins fan alive or something like that, and he came runner up. The guy is covered in Bruins stats. He rides a, a Harley, I believe, with all it's Bruins front to back. Um, he also does a screen printing business out in Cherry Valley. Uh, JLS Printing, I think it is. We're going to post that up. And he also does uh, Greater Worcester ticket sales. Uh, so if anybody needs tickets, check it out on my site. Um, click his ad on the site. Every, I mean, you get Shamrocks21 is the promo code, 5% off. You guys go through that site, check it out, man. We're getting back to reality. Concerts, sporting events are back. Uh, and after what we've been through, we deserve it. So everybody go check out. Thank you, Chris Seeley, again. Um, and I, you know what? Thank you to the Riveras and uh, AJ, man. The kid's everywhere. The, I, I can't even get jealous. He's a young guy. <laughs> got his, his life right. But uh, he loves the Pirates, man. And congratulations to you. Uh, and the Massachusetts Pirates for taking home the ship this year, man. Um, yeah, thanks. It was a fun one. Un unreal, man. Unreal. I'll tell you. So let's start this off. Um, I admittedly have never been to an arena football game. I've never, I've never looked that way. We've had the mass marauders here. Uh, we've had everything. But you're the reason, man. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be fully 100% honest. You are the reason why I took the interest. And it. I think I, I we're on the same page. I, it was one of the the post road like, how can nobody be watching this? These guys are about to take home a championship, and do that. That was the day. It was a couple. I mean, maybe a week after you would put that out there, and I walked into that semifinal game, and I was I, I couldn't believe that I got the seat that I got, fifty yard line next to that the. the um, the VIP, whatever that is, yeah. the lounge there, man, um, amazing. I mean, I mean, that we got to get that that more exposure to that because that's our hometown, man. We're in Worcester. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's that's my thing. You know, we're still building up. I think so. I think that's everyone's kind of excuse to not be there yet. But next year, I mean, there's there's no more excuses, especially because like we're we're getting the brand out there. You know, we're at the Worcester State game. We're at, you know, Funky's on Shrewsbury Street. Like, we're out here. So, you know, I'm excited for next year because I think it's going to be a good one to, to go to. Phenomenal that you just said that, too, man. All, everybody's got to get together around here. You know what I mean? Like, we got a lot of good here. We're, we're climbing out of COVID. That, you're absolutely right. That, no more for that excuse. You know what I mean? Um, we we got to get – Worcester is a great place. We both know that. But – many different reasons good or bad but it whistler is what it is and uh let's look at the positive man you guys just brought home a ship to, to our hometown i mean phenomenal and uh, yeah. i will tell you that that game was incredible for me the number it was my first like i said admittedly my first time being there on a 50 yard line front row and I want to be whoever won the fan of the night that night. <laughs> I, I think I friended the dude and I, I, uh, I figured out who it was, but that dude has some serious heart. 
Like, <laughs> Gary is high as a fan. I, I, I'll get his name after and put it out there, but uh, phenomenal, man. And congratulations to you for being part of that team, man. You, I remember when you posted that you got the job and everything. Um, awesome. And just to give everybody a background, me and Rob used to work together at uh, the Blonnie Stone which is no longer, yep. unfortunately. Uh, and Rob did the door. We bartended. Uh, we saw we were in the grind. That's how we do it. But <laughs> let me tell you guys who this man is. He would walk in on a Thursday night, usually, right? Yep. And set all his friends up before they even got there with a drink. And I'll tell you, like, there's a place in heaven for people like this man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's just the type of guy he is, which is why I've never lost my bro. I appreciate you coming through tonight more than you even know. Um, uh, I'm just happy to be here, my guy. Love it. So give me what, I mean, so your career, let's talk about you first of all. I, I went through a bunch of it today. You played at Holy Name. Yep. Um, did you ever play running back at Holy Name? No, I was, I don't know. I, was, I think I was a, a pretty athletic guy, but uh, it, I was always on the O-line, D-line. I mean, you know, we we didn't have a big enough team running back. We had a uh, we had a pretty good back that you know. Who was the was back there when when you played? Uh, when I was playing, it was Karan Wright. So okay. he was uh, he was really good. Um, and so I mean, he was breaking records, and I was just happy to block for him. So you know, I'm alluding to this big thing. So a after that, um, you became I believe the running back coach at some point. Um, but at Nichols, what did you play? And at Nichols, I played O-line still, um, played O-line, you know, I started, you know, I lost my freshman year because I had surgery and then ended up playing my, my junior uh, year, you know, was my starting year and then senior year was a fun one as well, but always stayed on the O-line. There was, there was a couple packages. I, I was in the, the backfield as a fullback, but never got the ball. Yeah. So you, you were number 50. Did you ever play D? Because you had 55 I on. 55. So I played defensive line in high school. And then once I got to college, I just stuck to the one side of offensive line. But I ended up wearing 55 because my brother, who um, he played football at Holy Name as well, he actually ended up getting Crohn's disease. So he couldn't play anymore. But his football number was 55. So I tried just kind of keeping that going on. And, and since then, like, that's just been like something that I am, you know, that's like kind of been like my, my partner in crime has been 55. So 55, man. Always tried to keep it with me. That's phenomenal. Um, so you never played running back, but you became the running back coach. And yeah. um, I, Mr. Hull, Coach Hull from South High, when he went off into the college ranks to coach, he, I believe he became uh, he was a linebacker coach or whatever. But I, I was always interested in that, like because you know that means you're a football player. You know the entire game or whatever now with you i can connect it because offensive line the running backs you clear the lane so you can jump on that other side and be running back coach that's how i view it and i i think it's very interesting and also you know jay sodabloom let's give a shout out to jay uh okay. he was always like uh, in high school he's a full uh you know linebacker lineman same uh, identical to to you and he always wanted the rock <laughs> he always wanted the rock so you i would assume that at some point you wanted the rock i think everybody always wants to you know get that that glory and that ball but in high school i never thought about it we had like our, our Quran was such a good back i was like you know what give that guy the ball as many times as we can and let's win the game uh yep. i definitely had the offensive line mentality for a while and then once i got to senior year i dropped some weight and i was like you know i, I could probably get something with this um, but again, I just, I just kept playing the old line. And then once I, I started playing arena ball myself, um, and then, you know, I was able to actually get the ball a few times, um, never scored a touchdown, but you know, we got, we got the ball, got a couple catches, got a couple yards, had some fun with it. Your career is not over, my man. Your career is not over yet. Are you, you're looking slim. You're looking, I mean. It's my career at the offensive line might be over though. I'm, I'm not, I'm not as heavy as I once was. I don't know if I'll be able to, doesn't matter what angles or, or what I'm using in the skill old line. position, my man. Get <laughs> ready for a skill position. I get, I love it. So, yeah. uh, dude, so you, we talked earlier. Tell me about the showcase you want to get going. 
Yeah, so the showcase, you know, we got going on. It takes uh, starting off in December 11th uh, in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. Um, you know, are, we're really trying to get the juniors, seniors, and all of New England, um, you know, to come out there from, you know, and show off. You know, when I was in high school, junior year going into the senior year, I had a surgery on my shoulder where I really lost all of my summer, you know, kind of exposure. So I really couldn't get any looks at the next level. And now, granted, you know, I didn't help myself. My GPA wasn't very good. And, you know, I, I didn't I had a bunch of other stuff going on at home that kind of hindered me from really caring about the, the next level of, you know, college and, you know, next level of playing. But, you know, my goal is really to give an opportunity to the kids that are, were a similar situation to me. You know, we have colleges coming out there already confirmed, front, like, you know, they're coming. You know, we have some great coaches that are going to coach up the kids. So, it's not like we're just really just trying to grab money and go like we're giving these kids the best opportunity for them to get noticed, you know, by colleges all across the country. Um, you know, a lot of colleges in new England, but we have some coaches, you know, coming up from, you know, different States and, you know, they're, they're going to give knowledge to these kids, you know, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to actually getting on the field, um, you know, I'm going to recommend kids to bring their transcripts because, you know, that's, that's how you get looked at is, it obviously, you know, how you play on the field is great, but if you're not doing it in the classroom as well, you know, it's really going to limit your opportunities. Absolutely, man. I mean, we have, so, you know, the mission of this podcast is basically to bring notoriety back to the city, you know, like we got a ton of talent that comes out of here. It's a shame what people miss, you know, so and much uh, talent was there. Uh, we're aligned, man. We're, we're aligned. So let me know if there's anything we can do to help you. Like, uh, anything at all, man. Um, I think it's phenomenal. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to get the spotlight, you know, to even the high schools. We, you know, I don't know if you paid attention this year to, um, you know, what's going on at South High. I know you're a holy name dude, which I was, I, um, I'm a holy name dude as well. Um, so, myself on this. Mario Rhodes is the head coach at South High. We have his son, Angelo LaRose. Uh, the Polar Express is this dude's nickname, right? <laughs> After four games, he had 300, uh, 1,333 yards, I believe, in four games. Um, Tell him he's, you here, stopped. He's, he's here tonight. Uh, yeah. We're going to try to get him on. I think Angelo is the guy that you're talking about. Like, I believe we're from South High. Uh, this kid has that many yards. He's on pace to do that much. There's kids in Florida that are getting national articles written about him. Um, obviously, you know, it's strength, the schedule, and that, uh, whatever it is. But why, why not Worcester, man? I mean... That's my thing, you know, man, like, you know, one big thing for me to be able to, you know, coach with the Pirates is to be able to bring something back. You know, I know we're, we're you know, the Massachusetts Pirates, but like we're in Worcester, you know, and so to be able to bring a championship back into the city of Worcester, it gives some like notoriety to Worcester, you know, was something that I really cared about doing, you know, there's so, like you said, there's so much good talent in Worcester, but, you know, it just goes so unnoticed and whether that's our own fault or just, whatever you know it, it's time to start you know changing that up um and i don't know what the uh fix-all answer is but we got to figure it out because there's some kids in worcester that are going, going unnoticed that need to need to get get looks and, and it doesn't stop at athletes i'll keep it the sports but it doesn't really stop at athletes either man there's a lot of people that have done a lot of great things like uh last week we but i told you Bobby LaRose, the head coach of South High, they're in a big situation right now. Through that situation, I learned that his brother was the CEO, CFO of uh, Petco. Like how, my point is like, you see all these negative things around and you see, you know, that's all everybody knows about what happened on Chandler Street last week on Main Street, but nobody knows these things, why? You know, like, it's not fair, but that's what we had to do. We had to change things, man. And, I mean, you know, I'm all about that because, like, you know, you look at Worcester, how many colleges are just in Worcester? Like, clearly we're a very educational, like, city. So, to, like, trying to demean what, what Worcester really is, like, you know, I get it. Like, there is some, the, you know, the louder people get the recognition, right? 
you know, and so, you know, no one, no one has a lot of stories about the good that's being done, but, you know, I love shows like this that are, are changing that around. We definitely are, man. Um, and that's, that is the entire focus of it, man. You know, just to make us better, make us better. Just, you know, and we're all getting back to normal, you know, but, um, just make us better. You know, the, the Massachusetts Pirates, I want to know how to get in that box next week is all I want to know. Um, I mean, not next week, next year, because that guy was phenomenal. You have to know who I'm talking about. I would have to say he's going to be someone you know. He was. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if I saw who it was, I would. Uh, usually when it's, go it's going on, you know, during the game, though, I have no idea what's going on outside of, what's happened with the offensive line, what's going on with the past, like, you know, the run game, the past, like, you know, that's the only thing that I'm worried about. It's fun when we start getting up a little bit and I'm able to kind of like, you know, play with the fans a little bit, hang out. Usually before the game, I try to talk to some of the, the littler kids and, you know, maybe I can sneak them a ball or something. Uh, that's yep. usually my goal. But once, once game time hits, I'm, I'm usually clocked in where. You were uh, focused. I, hey, I was trying to get pictures of you because I know you. Uh, you were the only, yeah. At that point, uh, you were the only one I knew. Uh, Jose and AJ were there, and I went by myself. I didn't even – I went with nobody. And uh, yeah. you were um, you were focused, man, focused. And <laughs> I didn't realize it. Garrett Hotley with a Super Bowl ring. Super Bowl. Yep. Was kicking field goals in front of me. I didn't even know that. I didn't even. You know, I'm very fortunate for all the, you know, the, the players I've been able to work with, you know, and, and, you know, as much as I'm trying to, you know, coach them and teach them, you know, I'm learning so much from, you know, the situations that they've been through and what they've had to go through, what they've learned, you know, and I, I'm always, you know, I'm asking them questions like, you know, what's your favorite run play is, Offensive alignment, we all have different answers. Now, most of the answers are going to be the, you know, the power. And they want to be big and strong. But, you know, hearing about, like, different reasons or different techniques, you know, I'm definitely fortunate to be in, you know, with the Mass Pirates. And it's, you know, something I don't take for granted because, you know, it's definitely been a lot of fun. There's been some bumps in the roads and, you know, some losses along the ways. But there's definitely been a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, definitely exciting times. Oh, you had you had them ready, man. I mean, you had you had them ready. I love it. Uh, so I read an article today that you put out. I believe I'm not sure where it's from, but uh, you talked about being a gamer. Um, and the connection here is, uh, what? I think it was two weeks ago. I watched Stealth Eye from like the tower, and I, I as I was watching, I was you know recording every play and looking at it. Madden came to mind dude. and all of a sudden I think I'm an offensive coordinator like I know you know but really do you did you play Madden of course do you give any of your coaching or just football knowledge any credit for Madden I mean not like did you take because the blocking schemes and the play calling it's a real thing I'm gonna be upset if you say no but you be, <laughs> be I I think, in all honesty, like, you know, I'm not looking at the offensive line when I'm playing Madden, but I think I learned – I think I take some of the things I've learned from actual, like, football and I bring it into Madden. You know, when I'm looking okay. at the defense and I'm like, all right, this looks like they're in cover too, you know, or they look like they're in man. Uh, you know, I'm able to kind of, like, change up the offense and I'm like, all right, let's try to run this. Or, you know, I think I pick up tendencies more. Uh, while I'm playing Madden, but I don't know if I've never necessarily learned a lot from Madden. Yeah, Maybe see, and, and actually, it's a great point because I didn't, I didn't play football as a kid. I didn't play, I didn't, I didn't play until high school, and I barely played. But it made me, if I had played Madden when I was a kid, and I had, it's basically education. If you if you look at it like that, you're watching the X's and O's. Now you already knew it, so I, I know your your response is real. Um, but now I'm looking at it like, man, if I had played Madden since when I was a kid, I would have known block, screen, uh, play action, all things that you you game with, you know? Yeah, I think you could definitely learn a little bit from Madden. Now, you're not going to learn the techniques and stuff like that. Right. But if you look at, like, you know, if you're playing on offense and you're looking at, like, their defensive linemen, you know, you can see, like, okay, they look like he's blitzing. Okay, you know, they have two high, so maybe they're in, like, a cover two kind of look or they're in – you know, they might be in a cover four kind of area. So, like, 
there's definitely some things that you can learn from it. I'm not going to act like there's nothing you can learn from Madden, but I definitely think that there's more of like, I learned something from the outdoor, like actually coaching it. And then I go into Madden and I'm like, okay, this is a little bit easier to understand what the other opponent is doing. Uh, I think I, it helps me more, if anything. I, I have yeah. one game in, and I'm ready to put my resume into the NFL to be an offensive <laughs> coordinator right now. I was that poor Bobby. He, he took it. I was like, man, play action, play action. You know, it ain't that easy, right? But And there's a lot of work that goes into it. But, I mean, if I was – if I – Madden, the X's and O's. I'm the X's <laughs> and O's, like, coaching-wise. But I thought it was a great point, man. I, and I was uh, – you know, I read that article today. I didn't even know that that you uh, that you, you played a holy name. I I went the holy name for a while, man, and it is what it is. But you have come a long way. And congratulations, honestly. I yeah. I mean, I went the holy name, and I had a lot of fun there. Clearly, a little bit. You know, I I got into one school uh, when I applied, and so fortunately, you know, Nichols took a chance on me, and I was able to go next to Nichols, and you know. I ended up playing arena football myself, you know, because of all the, you know, the things I've learned from Nichols. And then, I mean, that's where I got my first coaching job was coaching outside linebackers, you know, as a grad assistant. And then I went over to the running backs and then O-line and tight ends. So I definitely had some fun over there, uh, you know, learning a lot. And then, you know, really got my coaching career started over there too. So. Well, man, you're on a great path, and I, I don't I don't see it stopping. So you're teaching now, right? Yeah, I'm teaching in Worcester right now. So I'm teaching, and I'm uh, a boys and I work at the Boys and Girls Club in Marlboro. So really? I do a little bit of yeah. So I do a little bit of everything right now. Dude, when do you stop? I don't. <laughs> that, that's how. That's the key to life, man. Don't don't stop. That's you're right. Uh, so what do you do at the Boys and Girls Club? You just so I'm a site coordinator. So I work with, you know, kids from like kindergarten to about sixth grade, fifth grade. Um, and, you know, we just have fun. You know, I, it's like an after school program. Um, you know, today we were playing pretty much tag where I just chase them around the park for a solid hour and a half. Um, you know, we have fun. And, you know, again, like I try to use a lot of the things that I've been fortunate enough to have and give it back to the other kids, you know, kids that want to be in this cliche as that might sound like, you know, working at the Boys and Girls Club during the summer, you know, I was able to get the Mass Pirates out there. They got to meet some of, you know, the hangout, Arthur the Pirate, um, and, you know, with one of the players. And they had a great time with that. And to be able to hang out with, like, both sides of my life, you know, the Boys and Girls Club and, you know, the Pirates was awesome. And to be able to, like, see the kids, like, oh, my God, I want to go to games now. Like, like this is what, like, I want to do. Like, I want to be able to merge everything together and be able to get back to those kids. Rob, we're on the same mission, man. We're on the same mission. I love it. Yeah, let's bring it all together, man. The city, that, I mean, why not? You know, positive stuff, positive stuff, and it helps all of us, you know what I mean? For uh, sure. So let's get into some negative stuff. Uh, the Blarney <laughs> Stone, baby. What uh, uh, the, 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 be the best fight you've ever seen at the Blarney Stone. <sighs> The, I love that side. That is that. <laughs> See, I, the thing is, though, I all the fights that ended up happening outside, like, were always moved outside the Blarney Stone. I don't know. Maybe I was just that great of a a bouncer. Thank you. I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never, like, you know, I there was like a couple fights, but they got dispersed or they went outside. There was definitely some some guys guys who probably asked me to meet them outside and i was like well that's just not happening um, it's not a good idea it's not a good I idea for them. <laughs> you know they there is some couple people that were upset with me telling them that it's time to go and you know they would be like all right we'll we'll see you outside and i'm like okay well you yep. probably won't but like yeah, you know, yep. have a great night <laughs> you know i don't know i i is <laughs> Blarney was a definitely interesting crowd that has a lot of a lot of memories, good, bad, and everything in between. But you know, very very sad to see that one not around anymore. Unreal, man. I I just wish I knew. You know, well, actually, you know what? Maybe it was better that I didn't. But it was very sad. I mean, the ending you was know, sad. I was, I could be wrong. But I don't think I am. I'm pretty sure I was the last one to close up. I was. I have a picture. I, Where I, are you? Oh, I yes, bought, you were. Because I, I, 
what they closed on a Tuesday, right? I uh, I want to say it was a Sunday. Mine was a Sunday because I had one last customer, and it was uh, Donald. I, I'll never forget it. It was March twelfth. <laughs> 201. I took the goddamn <laughs> picture of the place clean all the stools up. I had one last customer was uh, Donald Prange, who, uh, remember Don? Yeah, I remember yeah, Don. He, he was my very last customer of, of it. And I, it was like cheers, bro. I swear it was. I had like, I, I just remember, I, I like, we were working on, like, I was working, I worked on Mondays as, uh, as the, uh, bartender. And, I remember just like being like, and this could be like, because I, you know, we were getting the text like, hey, like, you know, whatever is going on. And I was like, damn, this might be the last time I, I'm working for a little while. And then I think later on that week, it was like, hey, we're not working on Sunday because it was right before uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day or the yep. you know, St. Patrick's yeah. Day parade. And because I was supposed to go out to Boston for the Pirates. And I told, you know, I was like, hey, I can't work this Sunday. And obviously, no one was happy about that because we need everybody for that. And then that got canceled. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm going to go to Barney and hang out here. And then that got canceled. And then they were like, hey, we're, we're going to be closed. I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it was like, never damn. again. I was like, God damn. It was, it was sad. So I, even, even that, I, I, even, uh, I didn't even tell the story right earlier. But when, when you would come in, you'd set up all your friends and leave like a, a $20 tip. So that, that's even more who, who this guy is. You know what I mean? Um, it was it was a good time. Yep, absolutely. That place, man, R.I.P. It was. It should never went down like that. It should that place should still be alive? I think it's a Japanese karaoke bar or something now or whatever. But I don't even think they're open. No, I don't think it's open. You know, I don't know if it ever really hit me that it closed because it closed the same time COVID happened. So right. everything closed, and then it just kind of like like went away and like i don't know if it's just like i'm growing up or something but like it's like i don't go to bars anymore be, maybe because of covid so it's like i don't miss because like blarney was home like yeah you went to like that's where all my friends wanted to go like that had the exact like scene we were looking for so now like friday and saturday nights it's not like i don't really go out as much so it's not like you know i wonder what i'm going to do tonight because blarney isn't here it's like uh, yes, <laughs> 100% correct. So the dude uh, that I have that I named GM last week, Dave Kenny, he was the Blonnie Bruiser back in the day, man, like the 80s yeah. when it was the Blonnie Stone. Uh, day one, he's been on the box and he knows every fighter in the city. Good dude, old school dude. Uh, but that it's all Blonnie related, man. And it's all, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was it was a different place. You know, it was home. It was definitely home. Um, there's but, not many places that I've ever been to that are, are blarney, um, where you will literally get every type of person in the city of Worcester from the good and the bad. They are at blarney and you're, sometimes you're just scratching your head at both sides. Like, why are you here? Yes. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yep. Uh, 100%. It, it's a model of that area. Uh, like South High too. South High, everybody in the world, like any kind of person you can think of is is involved you know and and that was a stretch of the blonde because it was a couple levels beyond that <laughs> but uh sad to see it go but that's was, where we're at was. so rob yeah thank you for coming on tonight uh of course we're gonna have you back on again man i'll tell you i'm gonna be in that box uh, i'm gonna send you the video of that dude or whoever it was that i don't know i hope he sees me tonight. we're gonna post this on the pirate site if he's if, if you're out there <laughs> like I'm I'm gonna be there. I'm telling you, that was a, he was in the lounge. the The greatest part of it for me was that the coaches and the players were so close on the field that this guy was literally inches from the coach's ear, yelling, "You suck!" Like, and the, and the guy didn't even flinch. Like he, you know, he heard it, but he didn't. Even, he didn't look around. And the dude I I was talking to about, uh, I think it was number seven on that. Uh, was it Arizona team? Is that no, not Arizona. Um, who was that the Frisco? Fight? Frisco. Yeah. Number seven, dude. He made the mistake of saying it was too easy on one pass deflection in the beginning. And he didn't hear the end of it till the end. And it was phenomenal. I, if you want a fan, that guy deserved and earned every 
dollar of that uh, gas got he won that night in the promo. <laughs> I'm telling you, I I envy that dude. He, I think he caught me because I was doing the plays, and he kind of knew that I was there, like you know, doing some highlights and everything. And uh, he was coming as close as he could to me. I loved it. I was laughing my ass off. But it's a great atmosphere, man. A great time it for is. a game. It's local. It's right down the street. Every Uber down there. Go watch a phenomenal football game. In the city, you got you some know? great athletes on that team. You, you're right in the middle of Worcester. So, like, you know, you, you go before the game. You go – there's restaurants right next to it. After the game, you go down the street. You know, like, there's so much to do. And, like, you know, like you said, like, you're right next to the field. Like, you can, like, go get, grab a seat. And, like, no matter where you are in the DCU center, you're next to the field. And then after the game, you get to go on the field. You get to meet some of the players, like. And they're they're great players too. They're they're good guys. Like they're, they're not just like great athletes. They're they're huge good percentage guys. has been in the NFL. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you know, and they they don't try to big dog people. Like they know, like they they've been they've been to the you know the, the highest of the high. But they're here in Worcester. They're having a good time in Worcester. Like they, you know, they know what Worcester is. Like they have fun in it. And yeah. you know, I I think the more that we can get the mass pirates and exposure the more we keep doing our end you know with the math mass pirates coming out into like the community you know i think we can start bridging that gap and getting some more fans in there and i, I oh, think no. you know the ownership with the pirates are they're doing their job with it too so you so know, i think phenomenal uh me and aj have chatted about it aj is uh Jawad's mitt guy and uh yeah. He says it's crazy the hands that guy has. I tried to get him to to, to go, get in AJ's show here coming up in December, um, but he went yesterday. We we talked before the pod. He's like, man, my hands hurt. Right, I got a <laughs> uh, bad body shot today. He's the, AJ's out there putting his life on the line, training this dude, and he's just it's awesome. Jawad it, it will be on. I hope at some point. Um, but for now, I don't know the guy. He's an animal. He sent me a few videos of that dude boxing, you know, throwing hands and. I think, like I said, Wuss has got it all, man. We we're not just executives. We're not. We we go in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Worcester, you got everything in Worcester, man. So, you know, if you can't, if you come into Worcester, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything. You got to be able to roll with the punches. Yes, uh, so. uh, absolutely. That dude, <laughs> fantastic, Rob. Uh, so, all right, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you for coming on again, brother. I've been chasing you for months. I I appreciate it. Um, we're gonna end it with. Four Seasons Nutrition. They sponsored uh, T.G. Castro, who boxed. Keep an eye on him, Rob. Tell people about this dude because he's legit. He's got a great heart. He came from, um, you know, from like we did. What's the, you know, he didn't have anything he did. And the kid is making noise. So uh, look out for that. We're going to do um, also Platts Landscaping again. Uh, again, we'll shout out to Emily's Interiors and Chris Sealy. Thank you again. We're going to get some hockey involved with the show, too. Uh, I've never been an overly big – my guy, P.J. Stock, is the dude. That was my man from back in the day. We're going to get him on, too. So, um, everybody, thank you for tuning in. It's been a great week. And, uh, Rob, thank you again. Go Pirates. And we're going to talk about you, your uh, your showcase coming up, man. I'll do whatever you need for help. Let me know. Shout out to Bobby LaRose, who's been in the box here the whole entire time. But uh, <laughs> everybody, keep an eye on South High and uh, Angelo LaRose, the Polar Express uh, is his nickname. So, hey, everybody, have a great night. Thank you for tuning in. Rob, God bless you. Keep rocking, my man. I'm try. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>